Okay, hello XKeys users. As promised, here is my second tutorial in regards to controller mate for XKeys. Today we're going to cover how to get the XKeys, in this case the jog shell on a 68 unit, to engage my Hue vs. Hue and Hue vs. Sat in DaVinci Resolve. Now if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you already know why you would need Hue vs. Hue and Hue vs. Sat. For those unaware, this particular functionality is a little bit expensive. What I mean by that is a Tangent Wave 1 will not allow you to have that functionality on knobs. I sent an email to Tangent and asked them about the forthcoming Tangent 2. Even though it has programmable knobs, it doesn't have the ability to map the Hue vs. Hue, Hue vs. Sat to knobs, so you can't do that. I've been told that the Tangent Element can't do it. And so the cheapest way to get this functionality at home would be on a XKey 68 unit, um, which is only a few hundred bucks. Other than that, the next cheapest way up is going to be $3,000 for the Blackmagic Mini panel, not the Micro, the Mini. The Micro is the smallest unit meant for onset, near set, in the field kind of use. The mini unit does give you that ability, but that's $3,000. You can get that functionality a whole lot cheaper on your XK68 with the help of this tutorial. To get started, the first thing you need to understand is that to make this work, the jog is going to essentially be moving your mouse. To make that happen, you have to engage that in your Mac. So going under System Preferences, under Accessibility, you want to enable the mouse keys. Okay, so having this selected now allows you on your number pad as you push, let's say in this case I'm hitting eight on my number pad, my mouse is clicking up only one pixel at a time, two is moving it down, four is moving it left, and six is moving it right. You have to have that engaged to make all of this work. So from the top, what we're going to be doing is programming one of the keys as I have it on my unit, I have my six on the left, which is hue versus hue, and on the right is my hue versus sat. I'm gonna show you how to program one key. And once you know how to program one, you basically rinse, repeat, and do the rest. I'm gonna be doing my cyan on the hue versus sat in my bottom right here. And so that is going to be this button here. It's already programmed. I'm gonna move it out of here and do it from scratch to show you how I do it. So in this case, by having controllers selected, I have two units currently set up. I have a 20 key and a 68. I want to make sure that my 68 is active. And when I push the key on the keyboard, on the X key 68, it is going to highlight which control I'm pushing. And this is the one I want, and this is the one I'm going to program. So I'm going to bring it out. First thing I'm going to do is add, uh, as you see here, I had put a Shift 6. Shift 6 in DaVinci Resolve brings you over to the color screen. If I happen to be on the media page and I hit shift six on my keyboard, it brings me to the color page. Um, this to me feels like a nice safe way to start your functionality so it always forces you to be on the correct page. Now you can bring single key building blocks onto the screen in one of two ways. Single key building block and you can drag it on. I'm gonna undo. The other way is to use the keystrokes palette. Um, for this example, I think this is the easiest way to do it, so that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to grab a shift key, attach it, I'm going to grab my six, and then I'm going to add a cursor building block. What this does is tells DaVinci Resolve where to put the cursor on the screen. Now to make this work, you need to have a screenshot taken of DaVinci Resolve. So. Heading over to DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to be using the screenshot as an example to place marks on it to tell uh, Controller Mate where to put my mouse. But it's easier if you have these highlighted. So over in DaVinci Resolve, I've got nothing here. I'm going to turn these on. You'll see how these become necessary when we're telling DaVinci Resolve where to go. So now I've got all the indicators I need on my GUI. I'm going to take my screenshot. Command, Shift, 3. Come back to Controller Mate. Add in my cursor building block, which I already did. Coming over to the inspector, screen position, screenshot viewer. Open the screenshot, and now I'm gonna to navigate to that screenshot that I just took. And now I'm gonna place a marker on the screen telling Controller Mate where to put the cursor. I want it to go to the curves menu. 
Now you can hit click it once, or once you click it, then you can drag it, fine tune it, get it exactly where you want it to be. Okay, that's where I want it to go. Close it. Now I've told DaVinci Resolve where to put my cursor. Now I want my mouse to make a click. So grabbing my mouse button building block, attaching it, it automatically comes up single click, do nothing, and left. That's exactly what I want. Next, I'm going to want to tell it to go somewhere else on the screen. So cursor building block. Click it, screen position, screenshot viewer. If I were using my mouse to do this command, I would then go to hue versus sat. Um, this first one over here is the primary custom curves screen. This is hue versus hue, and this one is hue versus sat. In this example, I want this one. Get it right where I need to go. Okay, I'm gonna need another mouse click. Then another cursor, screen position, screenshot. So after I'm on the hue versus sat page, I would pick my color. In this case, for this example, it's cyan. OK. And then another mouse button. Add another cursor. The next place we need to go on the screen is up here. Onto the cyan. Okay, and then another mouse button. And that's it. The important thing to remember here is that as of now, the left button is being held down, and your jog knob, as you turn it, is going to move that pointer up and down on your screen. But there's one other thing that I like for my own aesthetic purposes I like my button to light up when I push it. So to do that, I'm going to come here. Go to controllers, come all the way to the top and then slide down. This is the 78th button, so I'm going to come down to the 78th button. And this is my blue button backlight. Attach that, and I'm ready to go. Backing up for a moment here, this last left button that we installed at the very bottom, this needs to be changed. It's unique. We need to make it not a single click but a button down. We need that button held down to get DaVinci Resolve to do what we need to do. So that is the programming here. Now, as I said before, we are now holding down the left button. To complete this functionality, I don't want that button to continue to be held down. I need to release that button. So I'm gonna need to give up one key on my 68 to make this happen. So I created this big ugly button here so it's nice and easy to find because I know I'm gonna use it so much. So in this case, coming over here to my controller, when I press it, I know that I am the 39th button, which is right here. And as you can see, I've programmed it to be a single button. I've programmed it to be a single mouse button building block, which is button up. Single click, button up, left. And then again, I like my backlight. I like it to light up when I push it. So. I have that here as well. So let's assume that all of your buttons are now programmed. You've got all of your hue versus hue, hue versus sat the way you want them. The last thing you need to do is change your inner dial. Now, the inner dial um, in my previous video shows you how to set it up to be a transport control. So you can move it, in this case, jog it left to right one frame at a time. You're going to, as a DaVinci Resolve operator, need to choose which functionality you like. You can try to have both of them working. In other words, the jog left-right can still be active while you do your secondary controls, hue versus hue, hue versus set. The problem is it's going to move the frame that you're parked on while you're making your adjustment. I don't like that functionality. So I disabled the ability to use it as a transport jog frame by frame knob. I don't want that anymore, not for this functionality, so I disable it. So to make this work, in this particular use for hue versus hue, hue versus sat. What you see here is the way uh, you need to make that happen. Let me show you how I created it. All it has is the inner dial. Remember to get to the inner dial. You just go to the controller. Make sure you're on the correct controller. Turn the dial. Now it's highlighted. Bring it onto the screen. So under calculation, the accumulator building block is needed. We're going to bring that in. And once we have it, click on it. 
In the inspector, you're going to want to have the initial value be zero. You're going to want the minimum value to be minus one and the maximum value to be one. You want the reset to initial value to be turned on and the reset input to be turned off. Next step, you're gonna to wanna to bring on value selector building blocks. Those are once again under calculation. And you will want two of them. Once you have them here, you'll notice you get this functionality, uh, zero through eight. I want to attach them to the accumulator. And now my functionality will change. Click away, click again. Now we've got minus one, zero, and one. On the left, we want minus one. On the right, we want one. So next, we're going to bring in the single key building blocks. I'm going to do that by dragging the two and the eight from the number pad, not from the keyboard, but from the number pad. When I bring them on, I want to make sure these are one shot, not press and hold. Click. One shot, now I want eight. One shot, and eight. One shot. You'll notice I'm using two keystrokes for up and down. That's because this is basically my sensitivity when I'm in DaVinci Resolve. If I only put a single keystroke, it's only gonna move one pixel at a time. And in Resolve, I just found that to not be moving far enough. I, th I thought it was taking too long, too many turns on the dial to get to where I wanted it to go. You may like it with only one, uh, one pixel at a time. Me, I prefer two. I think that gives me the functionality I like. So I put two on either side. And with that, I'm pretty much ready to go. So now, let's test our functionality. To do this correctly, we are going to, there are two final things to do. You want to save it. When you do this, you're saving it to the unit. You're saving this programming in the X keys itself. I don't want to do that because this is, uh, this is just added. I've already got mine working. I'm going to delete this. Put this back over here where I like it. So this is exactly the way I like it. Now I can save it. And then I highly recommend exporting it. When you do this, you are saving that programming. If you ever lose the programming in your X keys 68 for whatever reason, if you want to share this programming with another X keys 68 user, or the most common reason is you are going to make an update. I have decided to change my X keys 68 in some way. I can re-import this programming, make my one, two, five, 10, 100, whatever, as many changes as I like, and resave it. So I recommend that. First off, you have to, you have no choice. You have to save it and then export it. And once you're done, the last thing, the most important is you have to quit. Don't leave this open while you test it, okay? Your functionality will change if your control mate is still open. So now with it completely closed, you saw that my unit lit up, that tells you the programming got saved into it, this thing is ready to go. Over here in DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna clear everything out. Okay, there's nothing. So if I'm gonna test it out, I would, let's say, these are my hue versus hues, these are my hue versus sats, I'm gonna hit here. You'll see where it landed on my GUI, turn the knob, and now I'm adjusting it. It is being held down. The only way to get that to stop is to hit my button release, and now my mouse is back to normal, and I can go back to working. So now all of these, hue versus sat, can be used. Hue versus sat green, get everything the way I like it. Once I'm done, release, and go back to working normally. That's it. Uh, I hope this is uh, helpful to somebody, and thank you so much.